Welcome to Electra Online. Let's summarize one more time the rules and methodology of finding the voltage rises and drops around a circuit when we have magnetic coupling because it does get to be quite confusing. We went through a lot of details in the previous video, but here we want to simplify things. So what we want to do is first, we want to go ahead and assume the direction of the currents and usually I just assume them to be clockwise and then also want to travel around each one of the loops or each one of the meshes also in a clockwise direction so we assume a current direction and then we assume a path of travel so in each case around each mesh we're going to travel in a clockwise direction the same direction as the current inside that mesh we also have magnetic coupling between these two inductors here and so now what we're going to do is again we're going to go around each loop and simply write down all the voltage rises and all the voltage drops using this particular uh, technique so starting at this point right here so this is the starting point we'll go around the loop come back at this point we go across the battery from the negative to the positive end so that's a voltage rise and so that would be 100 volts with a phase angle of zero so we'll just write 100 then we travel along this path across the resistor in the same direction as the current the travel across the resistor is in the same direction as the current that's the voltage drop so in this case that's going to be minus four times the current then here we have a voltage drop again we travel in the same direction as the current across the capacitor but notice that we have a negative reactance so a negative drop well that becomes a positive number so that becomes plus j3 times the current and then here we go across this inductor again with the current same direction of current so that the voltage drops that would be minus j6 times i1 and now we're back at the same spot however when we go across this inductor we realize we also have the current i2 going through the inductor and the current is going in this direction and the path of travel is in this direction so that's in the opposite direction of the current that means we're going to get a voltage rise so that would be plus j6 times i2 now we still have some coupling the coupling between them is a reactance of two ohms notice that when i travel in this direction I go through the dot point first and now this is coupled with this uh, inductor and notice that the current go goes through in this direction so I2 goes to this inductor in this direction so starts at the opposite end of the of the uh, dot and notice I1 goes in here I2 goes in here this is opposite so this general rule is as follows currents enter the same meaning if both currents enter the dot we have a voltage drop if the currents enter opposite ends one is the dot one is not the dot then we have a voltage rise so in this case the mutual coupling between them is going to be a rise because I1 enters at the dot and I2 enters on the other side so in this case that's going to be a voltage rise plus J2 and it's caused by the mutual coupling between the two that means the current of I2 is the cause of that coupling so we'll write I2 okay now that means that's the only coupling that affects the first loop right here we have the coupling between these two inductors so now I'm back at the same spot I've accounted for the current I2 going through here and I've accounted for the coupling so now that is equal to zero so now I've gone around the whole loop I'll do the same for loop two so this is loop one I'll call it uh, loop one I'll call this loop two and uh, where do we start okay let's start at this point right there we're going to go around the path of travel is clockwise the assumed current direction is clockwise I go across this inductor I go with the current so at the voltage drop so that would be a minus j6 times i2 then I go across this inductor again that would be voltage drop because I travel the same direction as the current so it would be minus J8 times I2 then I go across this resistor that would be again a voltage drop because I travel in the same direction as the current so it would be minus 5 I2 and then I have to account for the current I1 going through this inductor right here I travel across the inductor in this direction in a clockwise direction current I1 is in the opposite direction so therefore I have a voltage rise so that would be plus J6 
times I1. Now, I also have a coupling. I have a coupling between this inductor and that inductor. But notice that in both cases we have I2 going through this inductor, we have I2 going through that inductor. Notice that they both enter on the opposite side of the dot, so that's in the same direction, currents entering the same direction that the voltage drop. So in this case the coupling will be a voltage drop, that would be minus J2 times I2. I have the same over here, because as I travel through here, I have a coupling between these two inductors due to the current I2 again, and so that would be the same thing again because it, the current I2 enters here and enters there, so we enter on the same side of the inductor, therefore that's another voltage drop, so minus J2 I2, and then I have a coupling between these two because the current I1. Now I1 enters on the dot and I2 enters on the opposite side, so currents enter opposite, that's the voltage rise, so in that case I would be plus a J2 times I1 because it's caused by current I1 going through this inductor, coupling with this inductor, and then I'm all the way around back to zero, so that adds up to zero. And so again, that makes it a little bit easier to go through each of the loops and simply counting the voltage rises and the voltage drops. Four rules essentially. First rule, when you travel with the current across a component, that's a voltage drop. When you travel across a battery, it simply depends upon from which side you start and which side you end. If you go from negative to positive, that's a voltage rise. From positive to negative, that's a voltage drop. If you travel against the current, so let's say you were traveling the opposite direction and you go across any of these components that gives you a voltage rise. So when you go against the current, that's a voltage rise. You go with the current, that's a voltage drop across any of the components. When you go across a battery, a source, doesn't matter what the direction of current is, it's simply the polarity of the source that matters. When there is coupling, then you have to identify which current goes to the one inductor, which current goes to the other inductor. So there's a coupling between these two because I1 goes to this inductor, so you write I1 times, and then it's either plus or minus depending upon the rule. If the currents enter the same side, if they both enter the, the dot side or the opposite side to the dot, then you have a voltage drop. If the currents enter the opposite side, then you have a voltage rise. So it's as straightforward as that. If you can hold on to those rules or remember them, then it becomes a piece of cake, so to speak, it's simply going to round each of the loops, each of the meshes, and add up all the voltage rises and all the voltage drops. So that's the straightforward way of doing it. You don't have to sit there and draw all the little arrows and the little diamonds. You can simply just use the rules and add and add up all the voltage rises and all the, all the voltage drops. So now in the next video, we're going to finally finish this problem by actually calculating the current. So I'll show you how to do that on the next video.